Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us for News 360. It's live from my News Hub studios right here at Adesawe Kanda Crab. My name is Roland Walker. And I am Portia Gabor. Coming up the headlines. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil, and Apart Foods. Kale Charcoal Toothpaste. This evening will tell you our concerns raised uh, have been raised after Chief Justice Kwesienin Yebwa issued a circular asking judges to hear cases mostly of senior lawyers first. Also coming up tonight, tension mounting in Akachi South day after two youth killed by police. In business, we'll tell you how the Bank of Ghana is being asked to crack the whip on the many who openly flout the foreign exchange directives. Elsewhere in the sub-region, Nigerian Vice President Yemi Oshibajo to contest the ruling APC flag bearer slot for the 2023 presidential election. We have details of these stories and more coming up shortly. Do stay with us. Now let's bring you our first story. And the Chief Justice, Kwesi Enin has issued a directive to judges reminding them to respect a convention apparently established to call cases of senior lawyers right here in our country first. Now, in a circular titled, Observing Age-Old Traditions of the Bar in Calling Cases in Court, and signed by the Chief Justice himself, Enin Yabwan, he points to what he says is a practice of calling cases of persons whose names are on the role of lawyers in order of seniority of enrollment and notwithstanding the notion of equality at the bar. The Chief Justice continues in that directive by saying, if judges call cases of senior lawyers first, it would afford younger lawyers the opportunity to learn from their seniors whom they would not ordinarily be exposed to, thereby enriching the whole legal training experience beyond what is taught in the chamber and other places of work. Now, look, uh, we need to comprehensively deal with this. Let's uh, uh, discuss this. We're joined by a former Attorney General and now MPP Chairman Hopeful, lawyer Ni Aikweotu. And we need to comprehensively take a look at this. Uh, and I have here with me this directive and I'm thinking, I'm no lawyer, but at least we've had some comprehensive discussions on the subject of the law. Um, this so-called age-old tradition of respecting what the tenets of the law and practice is, what do you make of this? Well, your line doesn't seem to be clear, but if you're asking me what I make of the direct... Exactly. That is me. That is me. There is nothing new about it, Alex. It is Remember that uh, uh, the chief justice was my mate from Thursday to speech here. We were called the same day, uh, and we've all gone through this practice over the years. When you get to court and they are seniors, just imagine in our days, Peter Elijah sitting down. When the case of uh, an unknown IQO2 is being called, it doesn't sound right. So, what we do is that you allow the senior lawyer to call their cases first, and thereafter, in order of seniority, it will reach you. After all, you also become senior one day. Those who are now making noise because they are genius, are they going to remain genius forever? They are also going to become seniors and enjoy the same privilege. And that is what we went through. There is absolutely nothing new about this. It is only that it, the chief judges put it down on paper. Otherwise, it mm. some, it's a tradition among the bar and the bench. We would have practiced. I mean, when I get to court and I, 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 I judge counts and I look around and I find that I'm the most senior, I just get up and say, respectfully, my lord, if I mention the case of so so and so, mm. nobody does challenge me. So that is the practice. I don't know what we are discussing today. Now, um, is that what is practiced in 
all jurisdictions, whether it's for common law or for, for the civil as well? I, as I said, you are lying, that doesn't seem very clear. Okay, okay. So, so, can please repeat the question. Okay, so my question is, you look at um, for jurisdictions, whether it's for common law or for civil law, where the practices are, is that what takes place? The, the cases are called in order of seniority? Oh, well, we, we do a civil law, a, a, a common law. I mean, civil law is for French speaking countries, you know. So this has been the practice. I mean, there, you know, most lawyers train first abroad in the UK before coming. So it's the same lawyers who became judges, and, and they follow the tradition that, you know, for example, I can give you one tradition which, which looks funny. You see uh, an old lawyer in tattered gown, and then you ask yourself, oh, why is gown that tattered? And he tells me that he shows my age at the bar. That is why we wear it. That, that girl, it's not because I can't afford it. You understand? So these are traditions that uh, we all uphold. And the judges are why? Look at the reading well. All he is saying is that I'm drawing attention that if there are requests from the seniors at the bar, please attend to those things. If it is possible, just call the cases. I, I have done this practice for over 30, 40 years. And every time I'm sitting, hey, you got the point where all the judges are your seniors. So the person says, oh, why have you called the other? Please put it down and call uh, uh, Mr. Iko to case for him first. <laughs> In fact, there is, there is nothing new. If any junior is complaining to it's all complete. And, there are some commentators who are not traditions. And they tell things sometimes that we should have that this amounts to discrimination. These are people who practice law. So they don't know that these are the traditions that we follow and, and admire and enjoy. And so we want to it. For example, they tell you we are doing uh, 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 civil cases before coming to criminal cases. You've got to sit down, wait, and they'll finish all their civil cases before it gets to you when you have a criminal matter. Mm. We, 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 that is what that is. So what is this thing that anybody is discriminating against? Anyone? Nobody is discriminating. This is the practice. This is the tradition. This is what we came to meet, and this is what we have done. And those seniors who are today complaining, I'm telling them they will be, one day become seniors and will still be applying or looking. So, at so, 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 they, they should continue to wait their turn. I'm told that the, that in England. Um, a lot of uh, changes have been made to the structure of what the ethos and, and the ethics are. It's been very much spiced with modernity, for example. In many of the jurisdictions uh, uh, elsewhere in the developed world, they still don't wear the wig, for example. You're not compelled to wear the robe if, if, if uh, in certain courts, as it is, as a matter of uh, just by way of ethics not enshrined in law. What about that as, or also um, in, relating, in relating that to this directive? Oh, that, that, is, that, 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 that is the case. I mean, some people have stopped I mean, using the wig and the gown. And the, the Americans, for example, didn't resort to that. They don't care. I mean, and then they don't even care about putting on a dark suit and white shirt. I mean, every color goes, you know. So we follow the British tradition. We wear dark suits and uh, white shirts and... Uh, 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 wing colors and gowns and things. I mean, uh, sometimes, uh, well, around this time, it's like being again uh, enforced. All right. But I knew before I left this country, I mean, it had come down a bit. I mean, you could just right. decide not to wear a gown or a wig. And or for example, Supreme Court used to say that if it's a criminal matter, then we want you to dress in full. Any other case, maybe you can not you you can uh, uh, do away with the week. But it's not being enforced. Well, well, uh, so we've been having that interaction with a former um, attorney general, but also now um, a chairman uh, hopeful or aspirant for the ruling new patriotic party. Are you equal to? 
well, uh, Portia, it looks like um, traditions take time uh, to get changed. Exactly, and there's been mixed reactions on social media on this development from the ordinary Ghanaian to senior lawyers. And Professor Kweku Azar says justice is meaningless if it, is, it becomes a respect of senior lawyers. Judges swear to truly and faithfully perform the functions of their office without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and must not favor senior lawyers, thereby showing ill will to junior lawyers and then another comment also coming in you can get the, keep them coming in facebook.com slash tv3 ghana twitter.com slash tv3 ghana and then augustine champon says call cases of senior lawyers first is not the same as adjudicate cases in favor of senior lawyers Richard Ohine Siedu says, why should someone even be called a senior lawyer? Does one's number of years of practice alone make him or her better? That's a question he's asking. Nene says, I've always said that lawyers themselves are the most oppressed group still trying to fight for the rights of others when their asset itself is being abused by their own adopted systems. LOL. Thank you so much for your comments. Keep them coming in. Facebook.com slash TV3 Ghana. Twitter.com slash TV3 Ghana. Let's continue with the rest of our stories. And Municipal Chief Executive for Akachi Kofi Chenya says investigations will unravel the true accounts of events which led to the death of two young men. He has been calling for calm among the agitating youth. I have spoken to them to be very calm so that uh, the investigation uh, will go on. The result is what we are going to assess, whether the fault is coming from the police officers or the, uh, the fault is coming from, from the youth or what if before we can uh, assess the final risk. Still on this development, Bernard Ahiafo is Member of Parliament for Akachi South and he joins us. Thank you so much for your time. As MP for the area, how did you take the news of the shooting of your constituents? Well, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Let me say uh, good morning to your sheriff's voice Evening. from India mm. because I'm okay. outside the country. Sure. In fact, I was so sad and depressed when I heard the news. Because this is the second time within a period of six months such a thing is happening in my constituency, particularly Akachi. You will recall that on the 5th November, following the death of one Etonam Avulete, the youth became so agitated. And the death of Etona Mavulete uh, involved an, an allegation involving was an allegation involving the police officers. The allegation was it was the brutality on the part of the police officers that resulted into the death. Now that matter is being investigated. The investigation is yet to be concluded. And then on Sunday. There was another incident resulting into death, alleging that police were again involved. And this resulted into agitation on the part of the youth of the area. They were demonstrating, as a result of which there was a crash mm. between them and then the police officers. And on this occasion, life was again lost and uh, unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, Hamza Adamu is no more and Yao Agboibo is injured in the process and hospitalized. Now we are yet How to long... publicly hear from the Ghana Police Service on this. Have you been in touch with them? What are you doing to talk to your constituents to bring calm and peace in the area? Well, I have issued a statement far away from India pleading with the youth to remain calm. They should restrain themselves and find an amicable way of resolving the matter. In fact, 
the second incident leading to the life, the loss of life of Hamza Adamu, for me, was needless. If we had exercised a bit of restraint without taking the law into our own hands, I believed this life wouldn't have been lost. It would have been limited to Etonam, Avule, and Yao Agboibo wouldn't have been injured. So I plead with the youth that justice emanates from the people, but it is exercised on their behalf by the judiciary. So let's exercise a bit of restraint and have confidence that justice will be emanated to us. I would also want to urge upon the police that they are supposed to protect life and property. They are supposed to maintain peace and security. They should use the ammunition sparingly. I mean, the use of gun should be the life, the last resort, because life loss can never mm. be regained. So we should all remain calm as we find amicable solution to the problem. Mm. So behind the scene, I've made a lot of calls, and I believe strongly on the 13th of this month, there will be a stakeholders mm. uh, meeting towards finding amicable solution to this particular problem. I am on need my need, pleading with everybody in the constituency to remain hmm. calm. Yeah. Let peace prevail. Two wrongs does not make a right. All right. Let us not take the law into our own hands. I mean, I'm pleading, never again should this happen in Akachi South constituency. Never again should this Three happen people. in Akachi South. Thank you so much for your time, Member of Parliament for Akachi South. Bernard Anya for all the way from India. But also still on security consultant and executive um, officer or chief executive for the Securities Warehouse Limited, Dr. Adam Buna, is urging government to have a policy document on closed circuit television cameras to reduce crime rate in Ghana. His comment follows a report by the Bureau of Public Safety urging government and the Ghana Police Service to increase the deployment of CCTVs as part of efforts to combat crime in the country. Dr. Adam Buna spoke with TV3. If you go to most countries that have CCTV, they are highly monetized. When I say monetized, if you are caught, you pay for, you know, breaking the law. And once you pay for breaking the law because the evidence is there, that is able to, the money that is collected is put together to actually take, take care of law enforcement and to take care of those who are not breaking the law. Until such a time that we monetize, these uh, installations or this, uh, what do you call it, aspect of law enforcement is going to be one of the things that will remain in their books. I remember when the late uh, inspector, I think uh, he was promoted, uh, actually he died, uh, may his soul rest in peace. There was a promise to fix all police stations with CCTV cameras. I think that is yet to be done. I would, I would urge, uh, you know, the executive the finance minister, the uh, the minister, the vice president, he made that 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 call that all police stations are going to be installed with CCTV cameras. I think that is yet to uh, be done. That hasn't been done, is there, is, and it's the reason why a lot of things are taking place: attack on police stations, you know, burning down police vehicles within the premises of police uh, stations, and all that. If these systems were there, when you come and you are attacking. You will do your attack, but the cameras would film you. You are going to be arrested, even if it's after two, three, four years. In more news tonight, Member of Parliament for New Drab and South has taken on and battled as in North MP James Quayson, promising him of getting a jail term alone. The Deputy Trade Minister Michael Lottery Berfi says the Asin North MP clearly violated the law and will suffer the consequences. He spoke exclusively to Komla Kluche. Sometimes you have to be smart. You, 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 conduct, you didn't conduct yourself well. You, you failed to meet the criteria for one to become a member of parliament. Somebody has challenged you. It has happened 
before. This is not the first time. We have seen that before. We have a template like that where that member of parliament was imprisoned. The chances are that this guy also follows you. So, but my point is that you saw this coming. They were cheering up. And you thought the cheering up could save you. But we're talking about a law here. And that's what, where he has got into. You see that now he has now seen the reality. And that the reality has come face to face with him. He cannot do anything about it. So now he's, it is him alone. He's going to now face the law alone. And or face also the consequences alone. That is what is happening. You are confident if this by-election is held today, the end will carry? We will win elections. I'm telling you for sure. You had a margin of it, over three It times. doesn't matter. The good news is that the seat is not an NDC seat. It's a pure MPP seat. Winning the presidential I mean, seat, presidential elections in that constituency clearly tells you that the seat is a pure. Does the MPP as it stands now have the goodwill of the people? So who determines whether one has goodwill or not? It is not about people talking about it. How many people have said that? What scientific work have we conducted or done to prove that NDC is doing better now than NDC in terms of communication or in terms of or MPP is not doing well in government? What what what? I mean, just few people talking. People, few people. And I'm telling you that these people, the good people of our sin, know what is going on. They are receiving their share of government project. Now, moving away from mainstream politics, the industrial action by non-teaching staff of colleges of education has taken a toll on students only a day after it took effect. My colleague, Judith Awachitando, was at the Accra College of Education and brings us to this report. In 2018, training colleges in Ghana were upgraded to tertiary status. At the time, an agreement between the teacher associations and government entitled teachers to some allowances and other benefits starting from the year 2021. It has been over a year since the agreement was to take effect and government has still not fulfilled its part of the bargain. Our degree holders are placed wrongly on the single spine salary structure and we want government to correct that. That is, instead of level 16, they are supposed to be placed at level 17. Uh, we are also saying that we have what we call generic allowances. Government is not paying our members. He has paid our counterparts in the teaching faculties, but our uh, non-teaching staff are not benefiting from non-generic uh, allowances. We have what we call uh, market premium, and there is an area of which interim market premium, so we are asking government to also ensure that the market premium area he pays it. The College of Education Non-Teaching Staff Association of Ghana on Monday 11th April effected an indefinite strike in that regard. At the Accra College of Education, all non-teaching staff including administration workers, caterers, laborers, artisans and even library staff have left post. It's just been one day since the Sensac strike began, yet students are already experiencing its dire effects. It's examination period for most of them, yet their classroom blocks, most of them are locked. Their library is also locked, and even the kitchen, which the school heavily depends on, is almost non-function. For students, they have no other option than to cope with this dire situation. This morning, like, we will not get food to eat, but principal was able to speak with the few... Um, cafeteria workers who came to work today for them to prepare breakfast for us. The strike affected the course outline, like we couldn't cover the first week, second week, and I think the third week also. And this affected the exams because the lecturers, like they did not consider that part that because of the strike then they were not set questions based on that, but they did and it really affected us. While students remain the most affected, the association has warned the strike will continue if government does not address their concerns. The strike continues unabated because at the national level, the strike declared is indefinite. The challenges are glaring and the risks evident. But until government responds swiftly, students might just have to hang in a while longer. Judith Awachitando, TV3 News, Accra. In other news, government has announced it will soon start house-to-house -house auditing of water meters to check illegal connections. Sanitation and Water Resources Minister Cecilia Abnadapa, who made this known at a press briefing in Accra, said discussions would be held to map out details of the exercise. Just yesterday, a resident of 
East Legon was caught red-handed. He had connected two big pipes into our main line and had denied the whole catchment area of water. When he was apprehended, the pipes were disconnected. Immediately, water started flowing in people's homes. But the most serious aspect of this crime is that people whom he had denied water were buying water from him. Illegal connection of water is an old age canker with the country's water supply systems. Many households have been denied constant supply of water as a result, according to the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Cecilia Abina Dapa, auditing households is the sure way to reduce the practice. The details will be worked out. We need to do this. We will not be afraid of those who put beware of wild dogs on their doors. We will go in there, find out, just to cross-check. Given the date, it's a secret date, because we don't want people to just look at the schedule, disconnect, and then connect when we are off. It will be a constant, sustainable way of making sure we reduce our non-revenue losses. Government has so far spent $740 million in interventions to improve water supply in the country. We are replacing weak sections of the 1,050 millimeter, which is a 42-inch transmission pipeline from Kong water treatment plants to Temabusta station. Rehabilitation of filters is ongoing. We are also installing bulk meters and zonal metering to also account for the water that is produced. And the MPP government has introduced several social intervention programs aimed at preparing young people for future leadership and employment opportunities. And that's according to the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. The Vice President was speaking at the launch of the National Youth Volunteers Program of the party in Kumasi. The National Youth Volunteer Programs aims at empowering over 100,000 youth over the next five years with 13 different models an initiative by the National Youth Authority to ignite the spirit of selflessness and volunteerism among young people in Ghana. Today we begin the process of mobilizing youthful hearts for volunteer service in national development. We have embarked on this process because we believe that lodged deep in the heart of the Ghanaian youth is a desire to see this country prosper and a zest to partake in the action which will bring about that prosperity. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said the government is committed to empowering the Ghanaian youth. Our government, uh, as far as the youth is concerned, we are very, very active in, in trying to make sure we prepare the youth for the future. And this is why we have free senior high school education, we have free TVET education, we also have major, a major program in providing technical and vo vocational equipment and, and schools and so on to our educational facilities. Young persons between the ages of 18 to 35 years will have the opportunity to volunteer in areas such as agriculture, education, health, afforestation, community self-help program, gender mainstreaming, among others. The Accra Business School has held its 12th graduation in Accra. President of the school, Bishop Gideon Titiofo, encouraged graduates to establish and maintain values of the school. With a mission to train global business leaders who can create jobs, increase incomes, and reduce poverty in Africa, the Africa Business School has over the past decades churned out accomplished men and women from varied backgrounds. Some past students include former Attorney General Ayukoi Otu, former Minister for Local Government Samuel Ofosampafo, among others. The 12th graduation held in Accra included those who obtained Master of Business Administration, Science of Accounting and Finance, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, and Global Leadership. 
The male and female best students expressed their excitement. It hasn't been easy, but at the end of the day, everything went so smoothly. I wasn't expecting this. I didn't start this journey with a view that I'll get the best students by dint of hard work, dedication, and commitment, and it has paid off. So tonight, I am very happy, and I feel so much on top of the world. I'm so grateful to God. I mean, all this couldn't have been possible because... Uh, what we started in the midst of coronavirus, I mean, it was all uh, uncertainty. But today, God has been good, uh, carrying home a lot of awards. I'm so happy. Founder and the President's Bishop Gideon Titiofe explains the rationale behind the introduction of IT programs. We believe that there's a correlation between economic development and democratic stability. So, for our democracy to be stable, we need to create um, job creators and that, that is why we are very excited that we are launching the uh, three ICT programs, the Master of Management in um, Information Technology Management, uh, BSc in Cybercrime and IC Security and also BSc in Information Technology Management. The ceremony was on the theme, Entrepreneurship and Digital Economy, Challenges and Opportunities. Well, we have to go for a break, but again, we have to just uh, let you. We have live streams, latest updates, 3 is always available, and um, we have all that right there. As you can see, the streams are available. But I'll also tell you after the break all the things you need to know about which transactions will be affected by e-levy, including questions about your transactions when you buy your utilities. Hello there, good evening, welcome to the business news segment on News 360. My name is Della Michelle. Let's begin with the Bank of Ghana, as it may have to go beyond issuing warnings to people who flout the foreign exchange law and punish perpetrators who are not too difficult to find. The law which frowns on quoting prices in dollars as well as trading of foreign exchange on the black market has been disregarded with impunity over the years. This practice also contributes to the perennial depreciation of the city. But is the central bank playing the ostrich? Well, Nanekia Mensa Abrampa has more. The central bank recently issued another warning telling the public to desist from quoting prices in dollars and trading in the currency without permit. The bank threatened to punish offenders according to the law. But this warning is not new and usually issued when the city experiences free fall in value. The president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Joseph Obing, believes the Bank of Ghana has itself to blame. The earlier that they enforce this law, the better for, the, uh, for all of us. But otherwise, people will lose confidence in their directives because they, they are in charge of this and they, 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 do, they have to be assertive. This is the fourth time. So now who is going to take them serious? Because the, the power lies on you. You have your directives, you have your policy, and you have to enforce it to the latter. And so bringing this letter doesn't mean anything to us. The quoting of prices in dollars is no secret, and people who do that, including government agencies, can easily be found out. As for the black market, it is an open secret. To do is one of the nerve centers for black market activities, and you see them even quoting anyone that walks by. Another known area for black market activities is the street leading to or from the only international airport. Ironically, these black marketeers operate in a security zone close to the barracks for the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority as well as the Immigration Service and just a walking distance from the airport police station. They also operate in the full glare of the public. Maybe the central bank should just go after these and that may deter the many people flouting the law with impunity. Regarding this foreign exchange law, we'll be monitoring closely and be giving you more updates in our subsequent brokers because as some may have debated, this seems to be a challenge over the years. But also, you may be one of those who pay your electricity and water bills using mobile money or other electronic platforms. Well, in the other 
19 days, such payments above 100 cities will attract 1.5% charge as e-levy. This is according to an educational material Christian, the frequently asked questions on e-levy, ostensibly by the bank, the Ministry of Finance. The This charge could force many to return to the days of paying cash at the various bill payment point. It could also negatively affect revenue collection of these utility companies as paying with cash comes with its challenges, including stealing by unscrupulous staff as cash payments do not have the kind of audit trial electronic payment provide. Also, if you decide to transfer money from your bank account to another account using the instant pay platform, you will pay e-levy on the transaction. The Ghana Revenue Authority, which states this on its website, also indicates that it is waiting on the finance minister to determine what amount to transfer through this platform and what will attract the levy. Meanwhile, the government is now hoping to raise 4.5 billion from the e-levy instead of the initial 6.9 billion CD target due to delayed implementation of the levy. A more business news chief executive officer of the National Pension Regulatory Authority, NPRA, Hayford Atakrofi, has lauded the management of get Gentrust to delivery transparent, accurate, and timely services. At an event to mark the 10th anniversary of the institution, the NPRA boss said Gentrust has delivered its mandate by being the most dependable pension trust in Ghana. General Trust is a corporate trustee licensed by the National Pensions Regulatory Authority to operate as a pension trustee and fund administrator. The company serves the needs of corporate bodies, individuals, and ultimately placing Ghanaians in a very comfortable position in fund management. The company has a strong backbone of experienced professionals who have worked in the financial sector. This has made the company stand tall to protect the interests of clients at all times and keep them updated by providing them with feedback. Hayford Atta Krufi is Chief Executive Officer of the National Pensions Regulatory Authority. And we'd like to thank John Trust for being there for the contributors in the name of trust to ensure that one day when they retire, they will have and income security that will assist them uh, to avert old age poverty. Chief Executive Officer of General Trust, David Apia Ufori, said the company has positioned itself to serve clients for the past 10 years. He added the company remains focused on educating the general public in the informal sector and enrolling them in flexible pension packages. The next 10 years, our goal is to work very hard to get into the informal sector while we also push very hard to make sure that the efficiencies that we've built over the last 10 years continue to carry through and allow the formal sector along with the informal sector to grow. Chief Operations Officer of General Trust, Ariel Eningfo, said the company's growth is due to the services offered. We uphold customer service. And um, we believe that by educating our scheme members and showing them the correct processes that we use to help them get where it is that they have to go to. Log on to 3news.com for more business news. My name is Della Michelle. The sports news after the break. Do stay with us. Time now for sports here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Now, the state of some home grounds or some traditional clubs in Ghana are anything but impressive. One of such is the Jendu Park in Sikandi. After being used as one of the training facilities for the 2008 Africa Cup of Nations, the Jendu Park has since been deteriorated. Situated at the capital of Western Region, Jendu Park is one of the oldest football venues in Ghana. The traditional venue has served as the home grounds of two of Ghana's great clubs, Sekandi Levin Wise and Sekandi Hazakas, who are both currently in the lower division. 
In 2008, when Ghana hosted the Africa Cup of Nations, Jendu Park was considered to be one of the host venues but didn't materialize after discussion broke but was used as one of the training facilities which hosted Ivory Coast and other countries. Fast forward, the venue has long been left unattended to by authorities and is currently in a sorry state. From the ticket checkpoint to the stands in the dressing rooms, the facility is now in a dire situation. Weed has taken over the stands, making it unfriendly for football games. The venue, which was once the biggest in the western region, is now a catastrophic state and not attractive anymore. And to some Ghana Premier League news, and Asante Kotko have extended their gap over Accra Hearts of Oak to 16 points after clinching a 1 0 victory over their rivals at the Barbera Sports Stadium. Here is a recap of what transpired on Sunday. The controversial incident that led to a penalty kick in favor of Asante Kotko has been the highlight of the match. Frank Mbela Ituga found the net from the spot. That is what proved the difference between the two giants. I don't penalty, whatever, no matter, it's a goal. House of Oak qualified with a penalty goal against Elmina Shanks. House of Oak beat Kotoko with penalties to take confederation. So if it is a penalty, whatever, it's three points. And we've taken that three points. They can cry. We don't cry. Three points, we've taken it. You can cry. Oh. The referee actually didn't help us because this penalty is not a penalty. And we are saying that if Kotoko also comes to Accra, we are going to repeat the same thing. It's not good. Hello there and welcome to the entertainment news segment. I'm Anita Ikuya Kufu. Now, former manager of rapper Black Sharif has sued the musician at an Accra High Court to over claims of breach of contract. His former manager, Snap Achavis Wayne, has accused a Kwekuda traveler hitmaker of ditching his investor to sign a record deal with another label, which is Empire Entertainment, without his approval. The suit was filed on Monday, April 11, 2022. Now, away from that, Sunday night's a date rush reunion offered a mixed bag of almost everything from fun to drama, anger, jealousy, and unguided emotions. Here are some major talking points from the reunion. When you complain, he'll be like, I'm sending my songs, I'm sending my songs. And you mean so, and you're a I told you I'm never gonna say, I will always be by your side. Love you, my baby. Need you, my baby. The excitement was taking a notch higher on Sunday as participants on the leading and most watched dating reality show who came to tell their story. Their captivating entrance would seem to indicate all was well, but viewers will be wrong. Homecoming came with a lot of revelations. People had issues. <laughs> this girl told me that I should buy her food after that we go home. After I buy the food for the lady, finish it, you know, and run away. <laughs> in the whole, like the whole week vibe in here, it's been work, work, work. Now, it's your back, where toy and our friend say, me brand on some move. From the high to the low point, it was frank emotional oh, and said. tense in equal measure listen our conversation never ends with him asking for money so i'm not surprised coming here to hear from other girls okay, that so he's rejoice, in their DMs rejoice, asking rejoice, for money rejoice, it was a night participants who secured dates on the show came together as others vow to end their relationships some others dream to take it a notch higher blanco Hello, you're Giovanni. Serious, you're serious about her, right? You're serious about her. Yeah, we are both serious. So what, you see a future together? Yes. And to a story that is still developing, Nigerian police have picked up Peter Nwachiku, husband of the late singer Osinachi Nwachiku, over his alleged involvement in the death of his wife. Osinachi passed away on April 8 at the age of 42 in a hospital in Abuja. And according to reports from close friends and colleagues in the music industry, the Kuwame singer died as a result of the constant beatings from her husband.
Very sad one there, but that's how we wrap up for entertainment this evening. I'm Anita Okiokufu. Nigerian Vice President Yemi Osimbajo has declared he would run for the nation's top job next year when incumbent Mahmoud Buhari is scheduled to step down. Yemi Osimbajo becomes the latest figure from the two main parties to join the race to lead Africa's most populous country and biggest economy. Osimbajo joins an array of aspirants from the ruling APC to vow for the party's ticket. First elected as Buhari's deputy in 2015, Osimbajo made the announcement after months of speculation on whether he planned to succeed his boss. Well, so that'll be it for News 360. Make sure you always uh, logged on through social media on TV3 Ghana and then also 3news.com for regular news updates. My name is Roland Walker. And I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Have a lovely evening.